What is going on, everybody? McLean Speed Show, World Champion, coming at you. We're back. OPO6 Law. I'm gonna try to bounce back and forth between this and the new stuff because uh, I'm having uh, honestly just having a ton of fun with the OPO7 stuff. I really like uh, all the leaders. The like diversity is awesome. There's like a good six decks that can win, and it feels sick to uh, be able to play against a bunch of like every color kind of has like a, a representative in that new set and sick and i really hope one piece does like worldwide simultaneous launches in the future because the other reason why i'm enjoying the new stuff so much is being on like the same level playing field with like uh, japan and stuff and not having like the three months of like data and everything from them and seeing what decks are doing well is super nice and refreshing so that's one of the other reasons i'm enjoying that but we over here in the West and NA and everything, we're still on OPO6, so we gotta keep going back and forth. And yeah, I wanted to make a little preview prep video for the three brothers that's about to come out, I believe in a few days, like next week from the time of me like uh, recording this and everything, is uh, Black Yellow Luffy is going to be a deck you'll probably start seeing a lot of because once it drops, it's already one of the best decks of the game. Obviously, we match up good against it, and Sakazuki matches up good against it, but besides that, Black Yellow Luffy is a threat to all of the other removal decks because they can recycle the Sabo to make it so they can't get KO'd, so they shut down like Moria, stuff like that, and they're able to supercharge their leader and become like a 9k leader, uh, like attack defense, and it makes them very, very hard to beat once they get that cycle going. But yeah, we'll jump into the, some matches with them, if we can find them, and then we'll go from there. But yeah, besides that, the Frankenstein build, um, I'll go over everything kind of quick. First, we got to shout out the this card, the Kamazo Manslayer one. So shout out Jansuko. He is the uh, one that likes to use this card. Giving it a little try, two, two copies of it. But also, definitely go over to his channel, check him out. He's another RP Law creator that has uh, been around since I've been, like, Pretty much the OGs in the beginning. We've been grinding this deck since the uh, the three captains dropped, and yeah. So shout out him. Shout out everyone in the little RP Law Leader discussion Discord. Always a pleasure talking to everybody and like putting together our ideas. But yeah, go over to John Suko, check him out. Also, yeah, get on him to be like motivated to keep uploading videos because uh, one of the things I think is super cool about RP Law and why I also think you guys find like other creators that also play this that are different because uh i think one of the best things about rp law is the diversity and like variety of the build so you can put like you can make anything work honestly with the uh, there's like the standard kind of builds you can do the hollywood film like whatever and that's what's super cool so finding other people that have like uh, different thought process processes and different uh, play styles than me i think is very important because uh we all don't think the same ways and we don't all see the same like moves and stuff so jumping around and getting different perspectives to help you figure out like the play styles and stuff that you like i think is super important but still i like doing as many builds as i can but i only can give like my perspective and my thoughts so definitely jump around and stuff if you can and especially if like my the way i play and stuff isn't clicking for you so, like don't feel bad about that at all because uh again rp law also can be played differently versus you can play it very aggro you can play it more control it's like the most flexible deck in the game that's why it's the best deck in the game but yeah break everything down real quick um just trying a real frankenstein thing a little bit of everything i cut beppo down to two just because uh once we get to ebo one i feel like you don't super need this card because the cool thing like i know people don't like ain but ain i like and especially when we get bond clay because when you're able to drop Ain and Bon Clay, uh, there you always get the Don, so you can drop them first, and then we can you can then go into Ray. Versus like if you have Beppo and stuff, you have to kind of set up a turn because you have to bring in Beppo off an ability. So I just have to also combo with the Zoro here because we're kind of testing this back, but we'll see. It's just because the Sakazuki is still on the loose, and uh, that one's not fun. Couple of these because of Black Yellow Luffy. Uh, Black of Law may become pretty important because again, they're gonna be playing with a lot of cards in hand And if you can drop this and delete their Moria or the baby brothers, you can straight up beat them that way, too besides that uh, I Have two Buena here. So Buena I'm using super situationally basically uh, 
as another Max or Gordon. So think of us having four or four, but this also allows us to search Ain, the promo law, and Shariah, which I kind of like. So we have our film stuff there. And then we have the 2K, because I wanted to keep the 2Ks. So I have two of Otama, we have two of this uh, Kamazo, and then two here, and then we have four of the, the boys there. So yeah, got the Frankenstein build, Frankenstein version of Hollywood Law. And yeah, let's jump in some games, try to find some Luffy, and see how things go. Alrighty, we got some Luffy action. We may be seeing a bunch of this guy soon, so I believe he pretty he's pretty much uh, well with Sakazuki still around. That's like their their only big counter is them. So I'll slide this out, and then next turn I'll be at four, so I could play this. And we save this, and we'll just see what we draw. We'll do Heart of the Cards, and then I'm looking for Shariah. So if I get Shariah, Shariah in this matchup's huge because uh, they don't have a way to remove Shariah right now. They, until like uh, the newer sets, when they get the cards, they can like KO. So they grab Ace, we'll have to pay attention to that. Alright, we get a uh, Kamazo, which is cool. Um, well how do I want to go about this? I kind of want to drop this to clear out their field because I don't like having to deal with the shenanigans of that stuff. Because if I just attack them for five, I assume they're going to take the life. Because they want to get down to zero kind of as quickly as possible here. And so, or I could drop Ain because where are they going to be at five? Um, yeah, let's do that. We'll drop Ain and we'll go one, two, three, scoop that into Beppo. And that'll get us to the to five, so I could potentially drop Kid next turn. And we'll play around that. Alright, the Hiori. Alright, well that's not ideal. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> that means uh, they probably have baby ace or something. Yep. Okay, so bring in an ace. So that is what I didn't want to see. Seven on five. Um this will take this one. Okay, I get max, which is decent. And then eight on five. Um, hmm. No, I guess we'll do this and this. But I can bottom de deck this at least. Then that leaves me a three. Problem is they're at seven right now. So I need to. I want to bottom deck. You want to bottom deck their five costs because if you KO them, they can bring them back. So I don't want to worry about that. Unless I put drop kid. But if I drop kid, then hmm, I'm trying to think. Unless I do Gordon, then we attack this because I'm at five, they're at five, and just drain their card. Because maybe I'll just play around that anyways. You know what? Why not? Let's just do let's do that, and then I'll attack them five and four, and then we'll see. Maybe we can play some defense. All right, never mind. Let's insta sack it. Okay. So we're gonna drop kid then. I'm gonna go how many cards I have in hand. Um dang, I should have attacked first, got him to seven and then drop this. So one, two, three. We'll get rid of uh this guy. Bring in Ray, get some cards here. Okay, that's actually kinda nice. So then I could uh search for some stuff there. Alright, well let me attack them. Get our another Don here. And then let's drop this, look for all right, big old whiff, sick. All right, well, no Shariah there. <laughs> that sucks. The uh, this stage of the game, I was hoping, since we haven't seen uh, too much, that we'd have a decent, like a better shot there. Um, seven on five. Hmm, I guess I'll take this and then I'll block this with the kid. Oh, no, we'll do that, and then I'll do this and this. Alright, not looking ideal. Ooh, I do get Gordon, so I could minus this down again and get rid of it. And then, well, I'm at six, they're at seven. Then we just tee off on them. Hmm. Alright, let me attack them, get a Don back. Problem is this guy is Rush. That's what I don't like. But they'd have to have more baby aces in hand to be able to do the uh, to bring him back. Okay, so they take one there. I'll deploy Gordon then onto this guy. 
Um, we'll attack him again, five on four. All right, so they have seven in hand. Hmm. I could. Let's do this. Delete two of their cards. Okay, we hit a Sabo and an Ace. Um, that leaves me with two. Alright, we'll end our turn there. There's a hidden Ace, so I'm hoping they don't have another one. <laughs> and then we'll make it so they have to play something to grab this life here. To if they're going to be able to supercharge. But I'm hoping we took out their plan there. Alright, so there's Sabo. I'm keeping uh, Max for this guy. Um, so they trash two more Sabos. All right. So we'll see uh, what transpires there. Okay, this is actually, they're just attacking me, nine on five. All right, well, we're going for, oh, we get Zoro. Okay, actually sick. Um, so that leaves me with nine. They're at nine. All right, well, let me attack them five on five. I get another Zoro off the draw? Oh, man. Okay. That's actually uh, pretty solid. Hmm, how do I go about this then? I may I may do a couple attacks. Just drain them out of uh, stuff in hand. Let's attack them again 5 on 5. Because now that I have... Uh... Alright, cool. So I can drop this here. Um, this there, and then I'll drop, uh, Zoro, and then we'll go one, two, three, scoop this out, bring in another Zoro, <laughs> and then we have, uh, basically all of these, so, I'll attack him five on five, alright, and then I'll attack him seven on five, alright, well, yeah, they messed that up, <laughs> I thought I was attacking five, but yeah, clinical there. That was a, okay, they did have the Moria in hand, so a good thing we finished them when we did, or else they, that would have got a little tricky, because, uh, yeah, basically, you probably will be seeing this deck a lot more, just because it's very strong, and it becomes similar to uh, RP Law. It's not in its final form yet, but once we get to, like, OP07, uh, both decks will be, like, peak. And from what I know, and what I've seen just from the results and stuff in Japan, these are two of the like the best decks because uh this deck uh the black yellow luffy just absolutely stops out uh their other removal decks obviously we're immune to it because we bottom deck but with them being able to recycle the the five costs like sabo that we bottom deck against the other decks they get to bring that back and with that sabo it uh makes their entire field immune to being KO'd by effects so as you can see that makes them super super strong and the fact that they have the baby Sabo, so if they're able to ramp like uh, off their life with the baby Sabo, they uh, get to up their leader by 2,000 until the end of their opponent's turn. So uh, as you saw with them being earlier with the uh, the ace one, if they're able to just keep hitting those combos, and the reason why Moria is so dangerous in this deck is because they get to use their leader ability, send two five costs back, and then with Moria, they'll bring back two of the baby brothers and then instantly use those to get the whoever's in here. They get buffed up to 9k plus the two Don on them. So they're attacking for 11k minimum. Um, and then they're going to be at 9k on defense plus having Moria on the board and whatever two other characters. And obviously if they get like the blocker Sabos and stuff, they can super shut down uh, most of the black decks and everything. Honestly, it's most decks is when they have the blockers up and they're sitting at 9k. That makes it super, super tough to beat them. So if you're able to strike, obviously I think pretty clutch here with the with Law. We were able to trash uh, both of these. That was pretty cool because then we couldn't uh, make it so they couldn't set up any more wacky uh, things there. But uh, yeah, be prepared to be seeing uh, Black Yellow Luffy like more and more, especially as the year progresses. All right, and as I finish saying that, we jump into another game against another uh, another Luffy. So, see how this goes. Um, honestly, against them, I don't know if I have a super preference of what uh, what's better to attack, like first or second. I haven't noticed too big of a difference. I guess uh, taking away second means they can't drop like Moria off the rip, but 
we'll see. They get the baby Sabo. And then these are the dangerous turns because if they have the Hiori, they can do uh, a couple things. Alright, we can take that and then their attack there. Um, I have Ray, so I'll set Queen. Okay. Now, I kind of want to drop a uh, kid, scoop this, and then go into Blocker Law, delete two of their cards. I think that could be cool. One, two, three. Scoop that out. Blocker Law. Do this. Use the card action. Get rid of two of those. We get one back. And then attack them. And we got rid of uh, a Luffy and a Baby Sabo. So that is a bit helpful there. Because uh, I think Law is decent in this matchup. Just because if you, especially if you trash for like Moria, that can pretty much just win you the game. If you're able to hit out of their hand if they have Moria. But also, if you're able to hit the baby brothers, it's super helpful as well. So we'll take this. Okay, that's actually cool. Oh, okay. Well, they drop uh, uh, that. I'll just block it because I don't want to have to deal with the shenanigans there. Um, all right. Let's do. Let's drop this down to four. What do I have here? All right. I will attack this six on four. Okay, they get rid of that. We can drop this then. And then I'll go one, two, three. Bring in that. Hit that out. Um, Call it good there. So now with Zoro, get a little extra power here. Got them at two. So this is where it gets tricky. Okay, so... If they have another one of these, they'll take another life and they'll use their ability right now. Alright. Well, this is uh, not ideal. Because, <laughs> uh... Now they can use their, their stinky uh, leader ability as well. Oh, okay. They uh, decided not to. Interesting. Um... Yeah, they... I think messed that up. They had they put the, they had the two dot on. They should, <laughs> their life should have two. Hmm. Well, I can scoop this out, and then we attack, uh, attack them a bunch. So do I need this guy? Um, one, I'm at minus three, get one back, so it puts me at four. So, yeah, no, I don't need this. So let's just attack that, get our Don Doodle back from there. Um, hmm. Well, unless... No, I think I just gotta wear them down in hand here. Because I can go one, two, three, at least me a four. I can attack seven. Seven three sevens. And then I'll at least do that. And then I can bring in Ray, I guess. So I'll drop Gordon. We'll do that. And then I'll go one, two, three. Get rid of this. Bring in I guess Ray. Get some defense here. Oh. I get Okay, I might just need to hard drop that then. Um, okay, I might just do that. Shiraya will let us stop uh, anything. And I have Max, so if they get anything else uh, stinky here, I can remove. So we'll see what happens. But this is where it gets tough because uh, if they have the Acos Moria, we might, be, we might not be looking too great. Because I'll be able to do what I was just talking about in the previous thing. So Sabo and Ace... So there's the ace, and then if they have they have the baby Sabo as well. All right, that's not ideal. Leaves one with four. Okay, well I can luckily get rid of this, and they only have three cards in hand, so I'm gonna be at seven, and then I get one back from Kid, so I can remove this, and then all right they're attacking seven on five. Um, what do I have? Do I have a two K? No, I'll just do this, and then I'll do this and this. And then do this and this. All right, Borsalino. Borsalino, a bit annoying that they dropped both of them there. Hmm. So what do I want to do here? Because they're at nine. I can get rid of one of these for sure. And then, or do I just want to starve them out? Because I could do that as well. And so let's do do that. All right, play this over this. 
onto the Sabo because we want to get rid of Sabo. And then we'll go one, two, three, scoop that out, bring in Ain. That gives me one back. The problem is they're at nine. So I may just launch uh I may just launch some sevens here on them uh, like this and play board. And so I'll just do that, I think. Alright, so they do that. Um Alright, attack him seven on seven again. Okay. Then do it again. Alright. Well, interesting. Because for them. Well, we'll see what happens, I guess. So they. I don't believe I way to get rid of Shariah. They have one card in hand that they have to discard. So if they don't have uh, a way to get the. The stuff back. They can't really do too much. Um. Okay, we'll take this. I guess I'll see what they do with these. So I don't know. Five on five. Um. No. Let's do that. So I mean, they can stall with their ability. Um. No. We need to do that. Oh, okay, then just quit. I don't know. Okay, I mean, they played... I think they just got into this deck because uh, they missed one turn where they could use ability, put two back, and they didn't use their ability again there to stall things out. But obviously, it wouldn't have mattered because they didn't have a way to bring their life back. So they would have had no cards in hand. And with Luffy's ability, the lives are face up. So when you hit them, and the life just goes straight to the bottom of their deck because uh, they have the, the caveat that is per the rules. It's like that. So I guess they were just going for it. But yeah, it didn't matter. Play things a little safe there because uh, they, again, they're dangerous when they have a bunch of cards in hand because you need like that one turn where you can just take everything away from them. And that's why I was surprised too that they were playing so sort of defensive there at the end because uh, they could just bring these guys back, especially since they had uh, they should have they could have kept this to get <laughs> to bring back like their Luffy and stuff and then buff them up, but. Yeah, I mean, it is what it is. It's uh, just who who we're playing against. But, yeah. Another W on uh, Luffy, so we'll take it. All right, we got some Nami action. So, we'll see how this goes. We're starting off with the, the Kaya, so not uh, the most ideal for us there. But it is what it is. We'll try to uh, play around all that. I'm trying to think of... Uh, all right, we'll do probably drop this and then bring in Ain. This is the the best I can do, I think. So let me just hack them uh, six on five. All right, well that's a bit annoying. So all right, noted that they have that card now. So we'll do that and that. Forgot about overheat. Let them bounce this. So I. Cannot make that mistake again. <laughs> Is uh yeah, this led to this. Not an ideal start. Not an ideal start for me at all. Not gonna lie. Um Alright, we want to do Alright, let's drop this then. One, two, three. Scoop that out, bring in the boys, and then let's not uh deal with those shenanigans again. I forgot about uh forgot about that all right well they send uh just row back to our hand that's kind of okay well we got them down to one card so hopefully that means they're <laughs> don't have uh, okay never mind i got this the bailout peel off all right well see how this goes um no i use that all right i have five they only have this this and this i could drop kid Make sure we can super whale on them, so we'll just uh, do a wave of attacks here and go from there and see what uh, what they get. Okay, oh, they block one there. Hit that. All right, that's fine. 
So I'll attack him again five on five. And then I'll drop a uh, drop kid here. We'll go one, two, three. I'll bring in Um I guess Law. I'll do this, do that, and then Alright, now we're just gonna start a uh, absolutely wailing on them this next turn. I'll have five, so I'll probably attack seven. And then a bunch of fives and stuff. Um I'll just do this and this. So, okay, they got the, the another Saji peel off. All right, well, that's not ideal. If they are able to hit all four of these, it normally puts you in a tough spot because that's eight cards in their hand out of their deck just from uh, them hitting these. But we'll see. I'll try to my best to probably do like a five, a five, and then seven. Well, probably like three fives and then a seven. Or I could lead off with a seven. Try to get him uh take stuff. Alright. Okay. Or they're gonna do that. Um, do I wanna drop another kid? Hmm. If I drop another kid, it gives me two at the end. Well, no, I don't have the board space, so never mind. This is attack five. And then I could attack uh Alright, and I'll attack. Seven. Okay, I'll attack uh, five again. All right, I'll attack seven. See what they get. Alrighty, and then two on law attack them seven and five again. All right. Well, hopefully that's not any stinky wacko trigger. But I guess we'll see. It looks like they're thinking about it. <laughs> wow. Okay. Well. Hit the... Of course, they hit that and another Sanji peel off. Alright. Well, I'm going to be at 7. Um, so we'll just launch some attacks on them. And so they're doing that. I'll use this to block out. And... Yeah. I think I'll just launch... A wave of sevens at them, and then if they, yeah, do anything like that, finish with uh, something crazy. Let's see what they grab. All right, Usopp's rubber band says so for one. All right, well, oh, I draw Zoro. We'll make him commit two cards here then. So seven on five. If they use the, if they use this. They'd have to use that plus something else to block this. So, all right, they uh, hit that instead. Interesting. Alrighty, so then I'll do this seven on five. Okay. Um. Let's do this six on five. They take that. See what it is. They better hope they got a 2k counter. Because uh, our boy's coming in. And it's even if they bounce something back, we're still fine. The the Zoro Barrage finisher coming in here. Um, oh Yeah, that's fine. So 1, 2, 3... Bring in Zoro, put two on Zoro, and then we will attack them seven on five. And yeah, I knew they had that, and then yeah, this, and obviously they had no counter left. So yeah, pretty much again with uh, Nami. I mean, that was a bit annoying with them hitting the life triggers. <laughs> like they were, they were seeing it all. Not gonna lie, with the uh, hitting the death wink and the life trigger and uh, this other stuff. But yeah. Try to stab basically against Nami if you can to the best of your ability to establish like the board dominance. And then you want to try to attack for sevens and nines, especially depending on uh, if you have the information of what's in their hand. Because a lot of their cards, again, are going to be plus 2,000. And then they have uh, this one that's plus 4,000 and stuff like that. Like Gavel's plus 4,000. So you want to attack seven and nines if you. Once you get things established and you have enough Dawn, because that'll make them have to commit multiple cards. And the more cards you make them commit in hand, the easier it is to beat them. Because 
the, once they burn out of cards in hand, that means that limits their options as well as uh, this. Uh, their counters and stuff and their active Don because it just super limits all their stuff. But uh, yeah, that is uh, beating Nami. It's a little tricky sometimes because obviously if they hit the solitaire mode and are chaining like the pilafs and stuff, you can easily get put in trouble. But uh, yeah, normally Nami though, pretty straightforward to beat again. Just gotta build, get the board like uh, control going, and then attack them sevens and nines once you have a decent amount of down and stuff built up, and you should be okay. All right, we're playing against uh, Yamato here. We have Shiraya, so things are looking pretty grand. I won't lie, and we can do a cool little combo this next turn. So I grab that. All right, we'll attack them uh, five on five. I'm going to play uh, aggressive here. So we're going to do this, and then we're going to use our ability right off the rip. Get rid of that. Bring in the boys. So, because I can now block anything they do with Shariah. And then next turn, because they uh, don't get their ability or their like life triggers. But well, I think they're running Sky Island, so they might be able to hit some stuff. But, uh, yeah. They do that. I do this and this. And we're big chilling. So I draw another one of those, which is cool. So now I'll attack them five on five. And then I'm going to drop Anne and go to the boys again. The reason I play super aggressive is because opening hand two of the boys there. And yeah, we'll just try to wear them out with stuff in hand right now. And then we'll get the board control and stuff like that. So I'll attack him again five on five. And then, yeah, I'll drop Ain. Go into the boys. That'll have us at six next turn. So then we can just absolutely wail on them. Drop this. Go one, two, three. Bring in the boys there. Alrighty. And if they don't have a way to get rid of Shrye here, I have Kamazo. Alright, well, looks like they did. <laughs> um, no. I'll just get do this. We'll play, uh, we'll play aggro here. Why not? Ooh, I get kid. So I could get rid of this and bring in kid. All right, yeah, let's just do, do the wave to get through uh, everything in their hand. And then uh, we'll play around that. Probably should have sat, let that happen so I could have kept this in hand. But I mean, it is what it is. Attack them again since I took the five. All right, so yeah, we'll play around that. We'll do that there. I'll drop uh, the Gordon as well onto there. So we can go one, two, three, get rid of that. I don't have anything. So we'll do this and then this. Attack them again. And they block out with that, which is fine. Cause now uh I guess we'll just see what they, they bring here. I don't have any cards in hand, so a little bit of an overheat. But we still have the four life. They have to play board. If they don't have they pretty much have to drop Hody Jones right here. Okay, I'll drop another Gadatsu. Um, that's fine, I guess. And then they're attacking eight on five. Okay. Well, we get that. Um, I'll attack them seven on five. I should attack here first, but a little bit of a goof. A little bit of goof and a gaff out of me there. Let's see what, uh, they get all right and then uh, I'll attack him um, again seven on five and then if they don't counter out of this we'll go for it We're playing super aggressive um all right so they do that um hmm, I guess it doesn't super matter keep this for defense okay well I'll just do that then. If they would have taken that, then I would have uh, brought in off of the ability. We would have got the one active back and then it was going to attack them 9 on 5. But playing like this in case they get the the Hody Jones. Okay, or I guess they do that. We got another Godatsu. for out of Sky Island, so. I mean, I guess it makes sense. But we'll have... 8 Dawn, so I can attack him 9 and then 10. If they don't drop a blocker, that is. 
So, I mean, the only blocker they'd have is the, uh, I think the one, like, Wano one. Nine on five? Sure. We can, we can take it. And then, uh, I don't know what this one is. Okay. So, nine on five again. Um, I'm just going for the game. And so, we'll just take that. Because why not? Draw this. I'll put, uh, the four on. And then I'll use my ability so then we can attack 11. So, I'll attack them. Nine on five. So they take that, and then we'll use our ability to go one, two, three, bring in Ray, because why not? That gets us that, and then we'll go one, two, three, four, five. Put them all on Kid, then attack them 11 on five. All right, well, that wasn't expected. <laughs> then to have exactly 12, okay. Um, no, they're going to have to attack for... A bit more than that. Well, this could backfire here. Hmm. Let's see what they they do. So I just have to block one of these. I don't know why they just led with the the six there. But I definitely did not expect them to have all that counter in hand. Let me tell you, this deck is normally like super bricked. Oh, they trashed their Hody Jones. Okay. What do I have for seven? I guess, are they going to drop Rush NL? That's all I could think of. Oh, okay, never mind. Six. So, ten on five. Um, no. We'll go this, 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 and this. So, we'll, uh, hit him with the, the tradesy backsies there. Alright, yeah, they did have the Rush NL. Okay. <laughs> well, yeah, that was a fun one. I uh, de definitely did not think they had three 2Ks left, so that almost caught me. <laughs> I thought we were super safe, I'm not going to lie. But uh, yeah, um, it's your motto. Obviously, if you get Shariah early, you're looking pretty good. Uh, I feel like Sky Island is the, uh, the most difficult version that you'll have to face. Just because of these uh, stinky Gadatsus, because... Uh, if they get a bunch of these in hand, you get put in that weird spot because you want to play with your life so they can't use leader ability and get like the double attack. But uh, yeah, I right, definitely going to play it a little bit tighter there. But I mean, it is what it is. We, we came out on top, so we'll take it. And yeah, do a little quick one here. So yeah, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next one.